An employee screams at a guy who turns out to be the CEO of the company and gets fired. Here's what happened. Subscribe to Am I the Jerk on YouTube and hit the bell to turn on notifications. This is actually a story from my mom from a couple years ago. She works for an energy company in customer service, taking phone calls, answering questions, and sometimes helping fix simple issues. It had started not too long ago and she was one of the first few employees, so right from the start, she pretty much knew everyone who worked there, including the CEO, who she describes as a very nice, down to earth guy who'd always dress pretty casually so he'd blend in with everyone there pretty easily. After a couple of months, they started hiring more people to work there, including this one guy who was apparently very entitled and considered himself better than everyone. My mom and a few others didn't like him because he was apparently arrogant, always tried to correct others only to be wrong himself, kept making the same mistakes, ignored many of the rules on the floor, and had a huge temper and would scream and curse at anyone who said something that he didn't like. The screaming would 99.9% of the time be something along the lines of who the f do you think you're talking to insert whatever someone did or said here many complained about him but the manager at the time was too nice or too scared or both to actually do something about him one day he was apparently playing games on his phone while at the same time talking to a customer and telling them all kinds of random wrong things when the ceo of the company came to check the floor after a meeting seeing this guy he walked up to him and calmly informed him that he was wasn't allowed to have his phone out while helping a customer so he could completely focus on said customer for the moment. Cue the guy literally throwing his headset off, jumping to his feet and screaming in the CEO's face, who he obviously didn't know was a CEO, and said, And who the F do you think you are to tell me how to do my effing job? Along with stomping his foot at each syllable. The boss stood there for a moment, obviously in shock, and the guy, thinking he'd won, smirked all smug before the boss pulled a, well, I guess you could call it a boss move. Well, I just so happened to be the effing CEO of this effing company. He screamed back, even copying the foot stomping. The dumb guy lost the smirk and according to my mom, went from angry to bright red to pure white in half a second. The boss calmly grabbed the headset, which apparently still had the customer on it who heard everything and apologized for what she had heard and just asked her what she needed help with. Finish in a minute and before hanging up once again apologized and told her the other guy was fired so it won't be happening again. As soon as he hung up he just said to the guy he was serious and he'd better gather his stuff. At the end of the day the annoying employee was gone and the manager got a talk on dealing with bad employees and someone baked the boss a cake. This is one of those obvious instant karma type of moments. After you've done this for so long yelling at people do you know who I am and nobody ever corrects you checks you and your manager is afraid to reprimand you or even just say anything to you in general, of course a person like this is going to create this weird overly inflated ego about who they are and think it's okay to throw their headset off while a customer is on the phone and curse at who he thought was just another employee at the company. Obviously he was more than shocked when it was not just an employee it was the CEO of the entire company. And clearly it wasn't just the manager who was afraid of him or wanted him gone because at the end of the day they ended up baking the CEO a cake. As some sort of sign of gratitude saying thank you for getting rid of this guy. So let me know if you guys have ever worked with somebody like this who basically just runs free and nobody's ever stopped him and then eventually they get in trouble for something like this. Don't forget you can always submit your own stories to be featured here on the channel via the link in the description. I work here, I promise. I work in a home improvement store and typically work nights as a stalker. So I can see the confusion but it's funny nonetheless. Night crew tends to have a more relaxed dress code. I was wearing a polo shirt and jeans. My manager called us in early because some holiday boss boxes had arrived unexpectedly. He told us to leave our aprons in our lockers so we would be less likely to be interrupted. I was still carrying an inventory device. A customer saw through this, however, and asked me to get something that they needed off the top of the overstock area. I was ahead in what I was doing, so I figured I would help them out. I grabbed the employee's only ladder, and I'm about to go up when I hear yelling from below. It's what looked to be the front-end manager. She tells me to come down and ask me what I am doing, and that customers are not allowed up there. I tell her I work there. I show her the phone with my employee credentials logged in and we kind of just laugh and tell her my manager told me not to wear my apron. We still tease each other about it to this day. This makes me think of those prank videos where people go into a store and dress as an employee of that store and people working there actually believe that they do work there because there are so many employees. How would they know if they did or didn't? But in this case, it's the exact opposite because this person works on the back of the store. So even a manager of the store doesn't recognize them. So let me know if you've ever been in a situation like this down below. Am I the jerk for walking out of a house after the host told me to feel free to to 
leave because she doesn't like people in her house. Here's the backstory. I'm dating this guy and his best friend was having a small party, if you can call it that. There were 10 people there at most. I wasn't invited, but my boyfriend, for lack of a better term, told me it would be okay if I came. Usually I wouldn't go somewhere without an invite, but since this is his best friend's house, I assume that he knew the situation better than me. I show up, go inside, meet the best friend, and she didn't know I was coming. My boyfriend says, hey, this is who I told you about. I wanted you guys to meet. The best friend turns to me with a straight face and says, yeah, it's all right, I guess, but feel free to leave because I don't really like people in my house. So I left. I turned around and walked out without saying another word. Now, to be completely fair, my boyfriend was shocked. He came after me and said that he had no idea she would react that way, but she was just having a bad night and that we should go back and everything will be okay. Obviously, I left. He didn't come with me. But now he's texting me saying that while she was a bit rude, I was even more rude for just walking out in front of everyone and that it made for a weird vibe with all of his other friends who were there. I should mention there is a language barrier here. She speaks Greek and Italian as her first languages and I speak English. So honestly, her intent was questionable, but the look on her face gave me a weird vibe. And an interesting further question is, does the boyfriend have the right to invite someone into someone else's home? This is a tough one because sometimes yes and sometimes no. I've done this before if the vibe was right, but mostly I don't do it. I would just ask first. So I kind of understand if he thought it was a situation where it would be okay, but it turned out not to be okay. I'm conflicted. Am I the jerk? If the boyfriend didn't explicitly ask permission to bring the OP there when he specifically knows that his best friend doesn't like people in her house, then he is obviously the jerk because that doesn't seem like a character trait that would change over time. If you know that your friend hates having people over and you just randomly bring someone over without saying anything, especially someone they've never met before, that's not a cool thing to do. No asking for permission, no heads up, no anything. And if that is a situation, it's kind of hard to fault the friend for saying, please feel free to leave because I don't like people in my house. But on the flip side, if the boyfriend somehow did ask and she said yes, and then the friend was just rude like this for no reason, then obviously the friend here is the clear jerk. If I had to guess, I would say that it's probably more likely that the boyfriend was just assuming that it was okay to bring her over and didn't directly ask at all, despite knowing how the friend feels about it. Because otherwise, it's kind of hard to imagine somebody saying this the first time they ever meet somebody who they were expecting to have in their house. So let me know how you see this, a jerk or not a jerk and why. Am I the jerk for causing drama during an important football game? I'm a 27-year-old female and last weekend I ended feeling a wee bit poorly with what turned out to be appendicitis. We were away for the weekend with my partner, who's a 39-year-old male, so I had surgery at a hospital three to four hours away from home. I had a small complication during surgery, so I had to stay until Wednesday, yesterday. My partner returned to work on Monday, but he came back to pick me up. The timing was bad because there was an important football game yesterday and it was really important for my partner to watch it. I'm not English, so I don't quite get the importance, but it's a big deal for him and so important that I wanted to make sure he'd see the game. I suggested booking a room near the hospital so we wouldn't miss it due to the drive, but he wanted to see the game at a friend's place. He said he'd make it. While we were waiting to get me discharged, he was getting agitated because it was taking a long time. He had to wait outside, so he was in his car the whole time because of restrictions at the hospital. After a couple of hours, he sent me a text that he had to leave or he'd miss the game. I begged him not to leave and reminded him that I could book a hotel, but he left without me and luckily made it on time to see the start of the game. He said he'd come pick me up tomorrow, which is now today instead. The hospital wouldn't let me stay another night or leave alone. Luckily, one of my friends came to get me in the end. She didn't get to the hospital until late and we got back to London around 2 a.m. The whole time I was trying to call and text my partner, but he only said that we could talk about it today. The whole evening I was texting and calling my partner ever since the moment he left me at the hospital. He only sent me one WhatsApp back that said he'd pick me up later, but he wanted to see the game. When I got home in the night, he was so angry at me. He said I was the most selfish jerk for constantly ringing and texting him during the game and that I ruined the game for him and embarrassed him in front of his friends. He says he can't even look at me and that I bring so much drama with me. It is humiliating. I feel at a complete loss. I think I might be the jerk for not understanding the cultural significance of football and asking my boyfriend to do a completely unreasonable drive to pick me up. But on the other hand, we could have watched the game in a hotel room and I wouldn't have been left alone in a hospital in another country. Am I the jerk? This is wild. He leaves her at the hospital and tells her he'll come back another day and she can't even stay in the hospital or leave alone? It's hard to imagine anything being more important than helping a person that you claim to care the most about in a situation when they're the most vulnerable. She had to have surgery, there was a complication, and she needs help. She's not just being annoying for no reason and she even set up the idea of an alternate plan where they would watch the game in a hotel room. So he drove all the way out there. She couldn't get out fast enough and he just left the country to go watch a football game? A game like many people pointed out that he wasn't even playing 
staying in. He wanted to go watch other people play a game. Not only is this guy obviously the jerk, regardless of whatever cultural excuse he gives, but you should probably break up with him too. But let me know how you guys see the situation down below. Is there any possible scenario where you think he's not the jerk? If so, let me know how and why. Am I the jerk for stopping my elderly dad from putting on a Barry White voice to answer the phone? I'm a 50 year old female and I live a fair way away from my dad who's 86 and my younger sister lives closer. I therefore call him a lot between visits. Dad gets a lot of scammer calls and also marketing calls. Also bear in mind dad is a bit deaf and won't put on his hearing aids to answer the phone as sometimes they get in the way apparently. One time I rang up and the Welsh version of a deep Barry White voice answered the phone. I started panicking, yelling dad are you okay? Oh my god dad you have COVID? My dad said is that you OP? Who is this? I said dad why is your voice like that? Are you ill? Dad then goes on to explain he puts on an extra gravelly and deep voice to ward off scammers. I started freaking out and saying I thought you had COVID. Please don't put that voice on. Dad says he will stop. I ring my sister to moan about how scared I was that dad was ill when he was just putting on a very deep voice for callers. My sister tells me that I'm the jerk for stopping my dad from putting on the Barry White voice as it helped him psychologically to face scammers. I guess I am, but one, it sounds very weird in a Welsh accent, and two, he didn't warn me or my sister he was doing it. So am I the jerk? If you know he's not ill and you've confirmed that and you know that you can ask him any anytime you want if he's ill or not and he'll give you an answer then what is the problem with him using a Barry White voice to ward off scammers? If anything for some people it's an even more pleasant phone call to hear a voice that they like. So it's hard to see the dad doing anything wrong in this situation at all. But let me know how you see this. Jerk or not a jerk and why? I defended my PhD yesterday and not one of my family or friends showed up. Not even my fiance. I'll try to keep it brief. Yesterday I defended my PhD in a STEM field which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering and Math at a highly prestigious program. Unlike many departments, my department's defenses are basically celebrations. You present for one hour to anyone who wants to come, your PhD committee asks you a few questions, and then you drink champagne and celebrate. I created a Facebook event for it three weeks in advance. My immediate family and very closest of friends all said they would come. These included my best man as well as two people who were going to give toasts at the wedding. My fiance was going to take work off to come in as well. Then came yesterday. I knew two of my coworkers couldn't make it because they were out of the country, but I wasn't prepared for what happened. I presented to a nearly completely empty auditorium. Only my advisor, two committee members, and a few members of nearby lab showed. It was so incredibly embarrassing that I almost couldn't make it through my defense. After my defense, I looked at my phone and I only had one message from my mom saying my family wasn't going to make it on time because they left too late. I called my fiance twice with no answer. It wasn't until 10 p.m. last night that she called me back. It turned out that her best friend from college, who I've known to be quite selfish from previous situations, had tried to end it all because she found out that her boyfriend had cheated on her. She knew my defense was yesterday, but begged my fiance to visit her all day in the hospital. My fiance didn't even say congrats. No one else has called or texted to congratulate me since I defended yesterday. I barely held it together on my call with my fiance, but I'm now so upset that I'm considering calling off the wedding, taking a job, and never contacting any of these people again. I know I'm a horrible person for doing this, but my big day was completely ruined by their inconsiderate actions. I wanted to address a few responses suggesting that either A, this situation is reflective of me not going to their special events, or B, that my family and friends aren't obligated to show. A, yes, I have gone to and planned special functions for others. One of the friends who told me they would show up defended her PhD a few weeks ago, but from another group. I, of course, showed up to her defense. I also helped plan the happy hour afterwards. I also helped plan another invited friend's surprise birthday last year, which was huge because she turned 30. So while I understand why people might think that I'm expecting something while giving nothing to others, I just don't believe that is the case here. And B, of course my family and friends aren't obligated to show up. Had they said they couldn't come due to work, etc., I wouldn't be upset. Had they ignored me, I probably would have just interpreted it as a can't come and would still be okay. But my closest friends made it a point that they would be there, then didn't show. That's what got me upset. Jumping into the future, there is an update. This morning, my fiance called me after I was more or less incommunicado all of yesterday. Because 
I had calmed down, we were able to have a rational discussion. It turns out there is a lot to the story that I was unaware of. She began the conversation with an apology. She explained that while she was in shock on Friday about her friend, she realized immediately after our call that she had completely ignored me and my defense all day. She knows me well and knew how upset and angry I was. She thought I had every right to be angry, but gave me a day to chill out. My fiance is now extremely pissed at her friend. Previously, I had implied that her friend was extremely selfish, not only due to previous actions, but also because she called my fiance and begged her to visit all day, even though she knew my defense was that day. Many criticized my feelings about this, and as of early this morning, I thought that I was wrong to feel the way that I did. I should have been a bit more sympathetic, but then my fiance told me what happened yesterday. For about two hours yesterday, my fiance visited her in the hospital again. Her friend was feeling a bit better, so my fiance began to ask her about the cheating boyfriend in a bit more detail. It turns out that her friend did not find out about her boyfriend cheating on Friday. She actually found out the Saturday before, and she had actually suspected that her boyfriend was cheating on her months ago. That Saturday, he finally admitted it to her after she saw him receive a Snapchat of a fully exposed girl, yet did nothing about it because she didn't want to lose him. In other words, she lied to my fiance about when she found out he was cheating. What pissed my fiance off the most was that during this past week, my fiance and her friend talked twice over the phone. Neither time did the friend even mention it. While I understand that she may have been bottling up her feelings or may have been embarrassed, her previous actions and things like engagement parties and dinner parties cast some doubt on this. Regardless of my feelings, my fiance is incredibly angry with her because she had all week to talk about this to have had a chance to help her with this trauma, but she didn't. She waited until the exact most inconvenient time. In my fiance's words, trust me, this wasn't spontaneous. She chose to have that reaction on that day. We are unsure what to do about my fiance's friend in the wedding. She is currently a bridesmaid, but maybe not anymore. About my family, yesterday morning my fiance called my immediate family and asked what happened. Sorry, but the answer is boring. It was just another case of my parents being incapable of getting anywhere on time. My fiance advised them not to call me yesterday because I was very upset. My family all texted me this morning and apologized profusely. They would have called me Friday night after my defense, but they honestly weren't sure if I wanted to talk to them. And lastly, about my friends, also yesterday my fiance called the closest of my friends that were invited. These friends I know for sure wouldn't lie to my fiance. Half of them forgot and were deeply mortified that they missed it. I'm told that they will call me later today. It turns out that my best man blacked out Thursday night after originally only going out to grab a brewski and the rest were a combination of something came up or I was sick. Although in one case, the person was very clearly ill and anyone could tell that from talking to him over the phone. So that's basically it. My fiance really pulled through on calling everyone. She didn't have to do that and I'm very lucky to have her. Before I start my job, we will have a real party that is sure to be fun. So how do you think I should handle my friends and family going forward? I think no matter what anyone's reasonings are for not being there, the fact that nobody showed up has got to hurt bad, especially if it's something you care about as much as the OP obviously cares about this here. This reminds me straight out of the scene from La La Land where Emma Stone's character has a theater performance and Ryan Gosling is supposed to be there, but he doesn't come because he's stuck at a band practice for a band that he doesn't even want to be in, but he's doing it because he thinks that it'll help their future. So he totally misses the performance and it's a pretty devastating blow because she really, really wanted him to be there and basically nobody showed up. There's a sequence later on where basically everything that should have happened happens and in that sequence, they redo this entire moment. And in the better, happier version, Ryan Gosling is in the very front row with a whole bouquet of flowers cheering as the first person to stand up and start applauding. And one last reference, it also makes me think of from The Sixth Sense where the little boy tells his mother that her mother, which would be his grandmother, actually did go to her performance that she always wished she went to. She just never knew because the grandmother stood in the back of the room and never let herself be known. The point of bringing up these stories is that there is something really powerful about having some sort of thing that you want people to be at and then nobody comes. Powerful in a way where this is one of the few things that it means a lot when people are there and it also hurts a lot when nobody is there. Whereas for most people, most of the time it wouldn't matter, but sometimes it does matter. The last thing I want to say on this is the kind of strange implication that the fiance's friend is trying to sabotage the defense. We only know what we see in this story, but I highly doubt that this fiance's friend decided to schedule her attempt in a way that directly conflicted with his defense. I'm sure that was the last thing on her mind. And just because the timeline doesn't exactly line up in the way that's the most logical doesn't mean that she was doing it on purpose. Sometimes you get hit with devastating news and your mind just processes it for a while before you actually 
come to any conclusions or take any actions. So all I'm saying is it doesn't seem very likely that she scheduled her attempt in order to ruin his defense. But let me know how you guys see this situation down below. Have you ever been in a situation like this? And if so, let me know what happened either down below in the comments or feel free to submit your own stories via the link in the description. Don't gossip to people in line. They might just work there too. I used to work at a fast food restaurant and for a while I took a break from work so I could focus on my family and school work for a semester. I still went to the restaurant to eat sometimes and catch up with my friends who work there. One day I was standing in line at the store when this lady comes up and stands way too close behind me. I try to scoot up a little bit, but I don't want to get in someone else's personal space so I don't go very far. She proceeds to move as well, standing just as close to me as she was before. Now the restaurant was a little short on employees at the front that day, so the line was moving slower than usual. The annoying lady starts trying to talk to me, complaining about the employees. Ah, uh, the employees here are so lazy. I don't know why I still eat here. They need to hire more are competent people. My food is terrible. Every time I eat here. She just goes on and on and I try my best to just ignore her. Meanwhile, the line continues to inch forward and after what feels like forever, one of the managers finally notices me and says, hey OP, how you been? It's so good to see you. I take the opportunity to step out of line, give my friend a hug and get away from the crazy lady. We talk for about 30 seconds and she goes back to the drive through and I move back to my place in line. Magically, the lady wasn't standing so close to me anymore and said nothing else to me the rest of the time. So that's why you shouldn't gossip to people online because they might just work there too. This type of thing probably happens all the time and if I had to guess, the lady who was complaining about the employees probably doesn't care that she's telling this to an employee. Maybe she felt mildly embarrassed but I'm sure she's still going to be talking trash about this place regardless of whether or not the situation happened. But let me know if this has ever happened at a place that you've worked before down below and jerk or not a jerk and why. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications to finish Finish listening to all the stories in this series, use the playlist at the top of the description. And next time you live stream, use the cream of the crop music. Search for cream of the stream on Spotify or whatever music platform you use for copyright free music to use for your stream. It's free cream of the stream. Either way, thanks a lot for listening. We'll see you guys next time.